I was talking with Star Luigi. Um, we both believe that Gengar beats Aegislash. Yeah. Interesting. Gengar beats Aegislash. Yes. Why? Uh, in field phase, aside from Aegislash's forward Y, which is the V, yeah. uh, a lot of his stuff will lose to just the permeate cancels and astonish. On top of in dual phase, if Gengar is the one applying pressure versus Aegislash, Aegislash has very, very limited options. Interesting. I could definitely see that. 6x is an amazing pressure tool. Scooby is also just another amazing pressure tool. Yeah. It's a weird trend. Gengar, I think, beats all the ghosts in this game, aside from Decidueye. Yeah. Like, just being able to cancel Scooby with a jump or with a permeate through the puddle allows for, because all Aegislash's moves, when they whiff, they're very committal. Right. And Gengar is an incredibly powerful whiff punish character. Interesting. I could definitely see that. And if Gengar gets his momentum going, it's real tough to come back from that. Aegislash doesn't have a lot of reversal options, um, so he has to sort of accept the pressure. And the last time we saw this matchup was actually at Worlds. Um, it was Apollo, no, excuse me, not Apollo. Oh my gosh, why am I blanking on our incredible... Haruki? So Haruki was playing, uh, yes, thank you. Tarotaro, yeah. So Tarotaro taking it in that instance. So we'll see if Mad Luck can follow suit. Um, Mad Luck, both players running Whimsical, going running Mew. Right for the aggressive play here, going right in for the grab. Oh, look at the spacing there. Ken Garcia not able to punish. It's Mad Luck waking up with Sledge Bomb. It is going to allow Wing Tai to get the crit grab. Nice homing here. This is going to give Mad Luck possibly a lot of advantage. Wing Tai ready for it. Wing Tai ready for the curse mix up, saying, You are not safe, sir. Wow. That is not a real streak. And that's it. That's the first round. Yeah, a great little uh, do si do from Wing Tai there. Wingtide, so we talked about things a lot earlier before you hopped on the mic about how he loves the game because he loves the mind game aspect. Wingtide is very much in that in that vein too. Hard knockdown off the Sacred Sword. Oh, not gonna get punished for the whip again. Gonna go for the Sludge Bomb. It is, in this matchup, it is incredibly important to have Sludge Bomb out for the attack down on Aegislash. Mm. Aegislash, such a heavy hitting, accurate, aggressive character. Yeah. Oh, catches him with the Astonish. Nice, finds his way in. 6YX and the 2XX is going to allow him to shift. And Wingtide just showing no fear, just grabbing him right away. Wingtide again, that's going to be it. Oh, yeah, but Wingtide going to take game one just like that. Mad Luck not able to even have an opportunity to burst. So much of the strength of Wingtide in bracket two is Wingtide does weird stuff. Part of Wing Tide's strategy is like, I'm gonna do weird things and you're not gonna be ready for it because ostensibly players don't normally pick these options. And when you prove to me that you can you can combat them, I'll, I'll stop doing them. But until you until you show me, I'm gonna do it. He's just gonna condition you with these weird options, and as soon as you're ready for them, you start looking for those weird options and you're using your you're using a lot more mental energy to try and acknowledge and see the stimuli of when yeah. those options come out to react to them. So while you're wasting that energy, as soon as he realizes you're catching on, he's just gonna go back to normal gameplay with things that you can't react to because now you're too focused looking for those specific reactions. Exactly, and he, what he and he's likely swapped you into the safer, the safer mix-ups for himself um, when he has lower health, when you're conditioned. Um, so it's an interesting way to like sort of curve out your mix-ups in the matchup from Wing Tide. Especially early on in the match, you it's a lot safer to go for these huge mix-ups and playing a little more unsafe, more risky, because it also allows you to get into your opponent's head. Yeah, and you have the HP. You have the HP and the game to waste. Yep. Mad Luck fascinatingly opting for Crest Rush. This is a set that does not see a lot of use in DX. Um, we'll see what he can make happen with it. Caught by the Iron Head here from Moonshine. He's going to get set up with the Sacred Sword. Sledge Bomb coming out. He's going to clash with Scooby. He's just going to go right for the grab again. Wingtide getting so much mileage out of these grabs. Nice. Can you catch him with this one, Vaughn? Oh, resets and into Scooby. That's going to hard knock down. Mad Luck almost has burst already as well. Crest isn't even charged yet. Here's that pressure that we were talking about being top three to flash and deal And Mad Luck won it on a mix up, but uh, kept it up. Mad Luck already has burst as well. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Once Gengar is uh, applying pressure on Aegislash, Aegislash has to just take it. Exactly. 
And he, Madlock not even having this waste his burst resource, like you were saying. Gonna keep the pressure up here. Getting this grab as well is gonna net him so much more mileage, because even though Madlock has full synergy, it is gonna drain Wingtide's meter as well. Yeah. Wingtide able to just barely catch up though. Madlock going to burst, wants oh. to keep his momentum up. The instant JY actually going over Mega Gengar's 5Y. He's gonna get Sacred Sword mix up. Madlock going to the TA. He's gonna get out of the corner. Did Madlock push a button? He did, but it was the right one. Oh, just barely missed spacing. Wingtide ready for it. Spacing with those JY so well. That is gonna be the round. Both players using their burst. Now going into round three. Wingtide on match point. Madlock with half synergy and Cresselia on deck. Wingtide just doing a great job of putting out big buttons and just catching Just going for home and one, over and over. Wow. Do you know the option? Do you know, yeah. If it works, it works. Oh, Madlock going for the grab, getting rid of his own Shadow Ball. Wingtide ready for it with a 4Y. Going for a 4Y, he's just pressing the same button over and over, but Madlock is gonna iframe through it with 6X. Get the grab mix up, this is gonna allow Madlock to have burst this round. And now we can go into Crest. This is why he has Cresselia. No, doesn't go for it. He's probably waiting until he's low on HP just to be able to get it back. A little bit of extra value. Here it is, okay. This is this is why Chris exists. Passes him with the 4-Y, goes in the burst. All he has to do is keep the pressure up now. Wingtide does have burst of his own. Just enough damage. Oh, goes to the air, Wingtide not gonna punish. That is gonna connect and that is gonna be it. Oh! Yep. Attack buff on deck with such a massively strong burst attack. There is no way he is surviving this. Yeah. Madlock, so used to situations with Gengar where he can keep his pressure going. Um, but Fuji Slash just has so many buttons that allow you to play, to play.